Hey guys, happy Tuesday, um, January 17th. I would like to take a moment um, to explain. I've got, I was given a few minutes where I was able to get my recording set up here um, today. So I've got a mic up there. It's actually recording, but you can't see it because I've got it on a boom stand. Um, and I'm using my recording setup for my, you know, music and stuff to make this video. Uh, but I'm going to get right to the point. And while this channel is not solely about Lyme disease and co-infections, and while it's not solely about eating disorder recovery, it's also solely not about throwing out generic tips for you to be happier because you know, we can read and read and read and watch and watch and watch. And if it's not stuff that's real, then it, I mean, we're not going to get anything from it. It's not going to help us. We're going to be like, oh, okay, here's another person telling me the same thing that I've seen a million times. You know, um, I just realized my ca uh, camera is crooked. So give me just a sec. Let me adjust that there. If you want to see, there's my, well, you can't see it. There's my mic up there on the boom stand. Um, figured I'd go ahead and show you that since I was messing around with this anyway. I guess that's a little better. Still not perfect, but, um, okay. So this video is about where I am right now as of January 17th, 2017 in my treatment for chronic Lyme disease and co-infections. If you are interested in catching up on the like background of my story, you can, um, I think I've mentioned it in a, web, in a video before, you can go to my website, it's uh, www.lymeislame.com, L-Y-M-E is lame.com, um, it can kind of give you an idea of my journey and where I've been and who I am and things that have worked and things that haven't, um, but it's been a long time since I've been able to actually write a blog post, I haven't been able to post since October because I haven't been able to type and write coherently or the pain, you know, has been too much to type a legit blog post with my arthritis and stuff. Um, and the trigeminal pain, the migraines and stuff have kept me from being able to concentrate long enough to write it. So that's actually one of the reasons I started the YouTube channel is to connect with everyone um, in every way that, you know, ends up coming up throughout these videos. But I also wanted to use it as a way to possibly embed these videos from this channel onto my, um, or yeah, onto my blog post on my website. That way people can still be updated even when I'm not physically able to type. Um, and you know, videos, you can, you can, you know, play them and then you don't technically have, like, this is an informational video. I don't think I'm going to be like showing you anything so you could listen to this in the background and it wouldn't put a strain on your eyes or whatever but um I guess I guess where I need to start for those that do follow my blog because they have no idea about any of this is um the summer of 2015 or spring of 2015 um I'll go back and, and mention that on the treatment section of my blog, I had kept track of some of my treatments, um, primarily the uh, Desbio, Deseret Biologicals is the full name, the homeopathic um, Epstein-Barr virus remedy, and I had started talking about the Bartonella series, I think, um, the Desbio Bartonella homeopathic remedy, which is another tick-borne co-infection that I have. Um, that causes symptoms that are so far out the, out the wazoo, I can't even explain them to you. They're, they're, you wouldn't believe them if I told you all the symptoms that this one disease can cause, not, not to count all the other ones that the others can cause. Um, but the EBV series, I, my body is so sensitive to everything. And these boxes are designed, um, actually I will show you quickly because I, I can reach and get it from my drawer right here. And this one is not the EBV series, but basically, if this were the EBV series, it would say Epstein-Barr virus. Um, this is actually the Borrelia babesia series, which I'll get to at some point. Maybe not in this video. Maybe this will be a multi-part video. But if you can see, and they're not they're not lined up right now, but if you can see, 
the, let me get in the camera there. The vials are numbered 1 through 10. Um, 1 is the strongest dilution. Like 1 is uh, diluted 1,000 times. And then the 10th vial is diluted, yeah, just 15 times. So it's a lot stronger. The 10th vial is a lot stronger than the first vial. And what you're supposed to do, and the theory behind these Deseret Biologicals, um, a.k.a. Desbio, which is what I'm going to say from here on out instead of saying both, um, the homeopathics is, you know, it's, it's, it's not that it's this magic water that makes you better. A lot of people call it water medicine or, you know, that it's just placebo stuff, but it's absolutely not. And I can tell you that because I herx like whoa on all of these. And if you're not familiar with what a Herxheimer reaction is, um, go to the um, information and resources and dictionary section on my website and it will tell you. But in short, it's basically a healing crisis your body has when you're kill killing off so many organisms and you're not able to properly flush them out fast enough um, at the rate at which they're being killed and they release, you know, 70, 80 toxin, neurotoxins each that then cause these horrible symptoms and healing crises reactions. Um, but, uh, yeah, so the EBV Death Bio series. I started in February of 2014. I, you're supposed to take one of those vials every three days for a month. And so one, you know, with 10 vials, theoretically one box is supposed to last you a month. And then you go one through 10, and then you go to the next box and you go 10 to one. And if you're still herxing by the time you reach the one again, the strongest vial on that second time, then you'll just repeat it again. Um, eventually they have another box that um, they call it the 1M series or the 10M series. And those are vials that you take once a week, which are stronger dilutions than the, you know, than the, than the series therapy, um, but the EBV took me, I, I was not, I tried to take, um, my doctor knew, well, hold on, February 2014, my doctor knew how sensitive my body was, so we started with half of a vial instead of a full one, so we, you know, took a little dropper and got drops out, and I put them under my tongue, and I have to hold them under my tongue for 30 seconds to a minute before I can swallow. Um, and the half a vial knocked me flat on my back for days and days and days and days and days and weeks and weeks and months. Um, well, not for months because I didn't continue taking half a vial once I reacted so strongly. We took it, um, eventually we ended up having to take it down to like three drops and then we'd move up to four to five. We eventually got back to like 10 and then half a vial and then eventually we got to a whole vial. And eventually I also did the 1M series and the 10M series, and we are fairly certain that the EBV is eradicated. Um, I will say I have chronic active Epstein-Barr virus um, as one of my co-infections, and what that means, uh, there are like, I think they say 95% of adults in the U.S., have the Epstein-Barr virus in their bodies, but their immune systems are strong enough to keep it in check. So, it, you know, even if they have it when they're a teenager or at whatever point in their life, even if they get mono and suffer for a while from it, once they beat it, yeah, it's that, that virus is lying dormant in their bodies, but it's not really reactivated if you're healthy and you have a good immune system that can fight it off. Obviously, in someone with many chronic illnesses, um, my immune system can't really keep it in check. So we always have to be vigilant about a reactivation, which we're actually going to be talking to my doctor about the, the possibility that one may be happening um, when we go to see him on January 30th. But anyway, the EBV series, I did, I believe, four or five. It took me four or five total boxes of the one to ten vials. Um, and like I said, those weren't just, you know, four or five, that wasn't just four or five months because I wasn't taking the full vials. It was, you know, drops at a time for, for a few months. That's all I could handle. And the reason we couldn't do all that, when I herxed from the EBV vials, the, the form that the Herxheimer reaction took with, or when I was doing the, the EBV treatment, um, I had no strength whatsoever. I was literally crawling even from the bedroom to the bathroom, which I had ended up having to end up doing for two years 
it's only been the past four or five months that I've been able to walk in our house. And that's um, about 80% of the time I'm able to walk from point A to point B in our house if it's a short distance. Uh, not outside our house, but in our house. So that's, that's hey, that's a major plus compared to two years of crawling no matter what, period, or having to be carried by my husband. Um, but the EBV series kept me in bed, kept me unable to even, you know, say, uh, here, I'll use my hand, pretend, or my arm, pretend this is the bed, and my hand is laying on top of the bed. You know, I'd be unable to even lift my finger up because the crippling fatigue that would come with this would be so, I mean, there's not even a word that can describe it. It is literally, you feel like, you know, they say the phrase dead weight because that's what you feel like. You can't move. If you get a text message, you better dag on hope it's not an emergency, or at least this is how it was for me. Not everyone reacts exactly this way. This is me, my extremely sensitive body. This is the most gentle treatment available, believe it or not. Everything else is even harsher on my body. Um, so the fatigue that just knocked me down and kept me in bed for... I, I don't even know, guys. I'm, I mean, I'm still in bed, technically, but like that... EBV fatigue when I was going through treatment it lasted for at least at least a year and we did the EBV treatment for well maybe it lasted about 10 months because we did the EBV treatment for about a year and almost a year and a half not quite um we're attacking one pill infection at a time because like I said my body couldn't handle any more than that um and I ended up finishing the EBV series. But other herp symptoms, just um, if any Lymes are out there watching this, and I don't really like to say Lymes because that sounds like, you know, oh, that's who I am. I am a Lyme. No, I'm not a Lyme. I'm a person. I'm a, I'm a child of God. I'm a valued, worthy child of God who happens to struggle with Lyme disease and co-infection. So don't ever let anyone tell you that your illnesses are you because they are not. You are you, and you just happen to have these illnesses right now. Um, but if anyone with Lyme and co-infections is watching this, I, uh, I, I, I wanted to say that, um, you know, I want to, I want to tell you what my, my very sensitive body specific Herx reactions were to this death bio EBV series. We went over the fatigue, um, headaches that were just exploding. If you've ever had mono, um, and you've been diagnosed with mono, even if you don't have these chronic illnesses, if you can remember how that you could not move a single muscle like it even took too much to talk too much effort um and to be honest right now my jaws are wearing out on me guys I, I mean it hurts but um and then there's the there's 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 the no appetite part too which in 2014 before my mind was in a better place as far as my eating disorder goes um which I will go through that story in another series of videos, but my, my mind is not completely healed in regards to my eating disorder, but I am making great strides finally after 14 years or after half of my life, which I've referenced in, in um, previous videos, so you can check those out if you want. But I will be talking about that more in depth um, on some series in the future. But I, 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 you know what, I've just decided I'm going to talk about Death Bio EBV on this video for anyone that's searching it so they'll have the information. So the EBV series, uh, stuff that I already mentioned, the fatigue, um, the headaches that just did not stop. They were relentless, 24 hours a day, uh, no matter what I use to detox. I use, um, I've got it here too, I use this lovely product. Uh, now they make these separately, oh, I was holding it up to my microphone, that was stupid. They make these as separate, I can't see it, make sure I'm getting it there, separate supplements, the Berber and Canela by Nutramedics. Um, they make them individually, but I found that I was buying both bottles and using it at the same time anyway, so I went ahead and bought the combination because the Berber specifically helps um, flush out some of the Lyme and co-infection toxins, and the Canela helps flush out specific neurotoxins. It's a brain and nerve cleanse. Um, they are all natural. Basically, you put, you know, if, if when it's the combined one uh, bottle like that, you put 20 drops into a glass of water and let it sit for a minute and then drink it. Um, if it's an individual bottle, you just put 
10 drops in and then it's the same process. And you can do that once a day just for maintenance. You can do that every 15 minutes for as long as you need to if it's helping you get through a hurt, which sometimes it was a miracle worker for me. Um, I will never be without that supplement. Um, but the EBV, one of the scary parts for me when I was doing the EBV treatment was the fact that it not only left me with no appetite, but that it left me with no appetite so intensely that I, even the thought of food or hearing someone say the name of any food or just the word food in general or lunch or any anything related would make me so sick that I would feel like I was going to throw up. And sometimes I did because that was one of the other lovely side effects I got was, was nausea that was just unrelenting. Um, and I still deal with nausea daily, um, specifically, or especially in the mornings more than other, um, times most often. But, um, I mean, it was, it was not good for someone who at that time in early 2014 was still, her mind was still very much entrenched, entrenched in her eating disorder behaviors and thoughts and mindset. Um, so it was scary. But we got through it. There, there were days where I physically could not even look at food or think about it. But thankfully, the days that I, you know, the days where I had a little bit of a reprieve, like if I, if I was taking, um, you know, say if I, if I was to the point where I was taking, you know, so many drops every three days, you know, maybe days one and two would be kind of rough. I might be able to eat something at the end of day two, and then day three would be a little better. I'd be able to eat, you know, enough to sustain myself and prepare my body for the next dose, which would then knock me down again and repeat the cycle over and over. And it did gradually improve every time. But, um, you know, it, it brought a lot of fear with it because... This was an out of my control not being able to eat. And my first disordered thought about it was, oh, this is awesome. Now I have a reason why I don't have to eat. And that was stupid. That was stupid. I took my glasses off to prove my point. That thought process was stupid and not healthy and stupid and of Satan and stupid. And you get my drift, right? It was stupid because, because nobody... Why would, why would I be happy that I'm having reactions from treatment for an infection that is making me unable to give my body what it needs to live when my goal is to be able to live life again, okay? It's, it was stupid. I know that, um, however, it was disordered. So I can't claim full credit for its stupidity because it was very disordered and I have an eating disorder and I'm not ashamed of it because I am recovering and God is going to deliver me, and I'm going to leave that there for now, but I just wanted to emphasize that, that I realized that was a stupid thought process, but I, I was so disordered at that point, still in my mind, that that's, you know, I I enjoyed the, the thought of it. I didn't so much enjoy how it felt. I want to make that clear. It sucked. Because there actually were days where I would think, man, everybody's able to eat. Everybody's doing this and that. And, and even if I, even if food made me nervous, I like got upset because everybody could eat. And then I wasn't able to because of these infections and if I, or because of this treatment and the Herx reactions. And then if I would, I'd end up either throwing up or just feeling sick the entire night. Um, but we did manage it as well as we could. And, um, you know, like I said, that, that also lessened with time. Um, there were, there were many other things that happened with the EBV, the, but the, the fatigue, the headaches, the need for quiet, my sensitivities got really, really bad. My light and sound sensitivities, um, got really bad again as well. Um, the, all of this stuff related to food and not really being able to eat. And then when I, when I was able to eat, there were only like two or three certain things that would sound remotely tolerable or as I call it shove downable because during the EBV treatment I never had an actual appetite um at least you know not until we were towards the end and there are many times today I still don't and that's for reasons that I again will discuss in another video since this is going to end up being a series and I'm already almost to 20 minutes but the um the, hold on a second, Beagle's shaking the bed. Lucy. Lucy. 
sorry, and I'm sorry I can't do video casts. I suck at that. Um, anyway, the EBV treatment uh, was just under a year and a half, and when it was finished, we did retest just because I, I was curious, just I wanted to know, you know, what my, even though the tests aren't reliable, if anyone who's going through this um, has been tested for any of this, you know that the tests cannot be reliable. However, they can kind of help guide you if you happen to get, you know, a, a test that shows you something or indicates something. And when we did my first round of tests for EBV, you know, four years ago-ish, um, all of my EBV markers came back like sky high off the charts. I can't even remember right now to tell you the numbers because they were so far outside of the normal reference range that I thought, oh my gosh, how has someone not picked this up before? But um, when we went back and retested after I had done four or five boxes of the one to 10 vials, and then I also did the 1M and the 10M series, which are the boxes that you do once a week. Um, oh, I will note with my EBV, my trigeminal neuralgia pain also flared up a lot, but I'm not sure it was the EBV that caused it. I think it was more likely the Bartonella because that is flaring up again right now, and so is this badly, so that was just a side note. However, I wanted to make a note of it in case someone does experience that type of nerve pain um, with the EBV uh, that, you know, that, that, that could have been related to it. So if you experience that, know that it's a possibility, but I am not a doctor. I'm just sharing my experience, so don't take this as a gospel truth. Just take this as Becca's truth. Um, so the main things, like I said, again, recap with the EBV, the main hurt symptoms that I got from it, unrelenting fatigue. Um, yet a lot of times it was the fatigue where I wasn't able to sleep, and I still had horrible insomnia. My insomnia, I don't think I slept a full, or I mean, I don't think I slept during the night for probably almost that entire year of 2014 once we started the treatment and if I did sleep at night it was you know maybe an hour or two once a week um, but the downside to that is when you have Lyme disease and co-infections your um, your uh, um, you have day night reversal so even though I couldn't sleep at night during the day when Usually day night reversal, you know, you're able to sleep in the day, not at night. No, I still couldn't sleep in the day. I just felt that crippling fatigue. So I'd lay here in bed and I had to have someone here 24 seven to be able to go get me water or refill my bo water bottle for me or, um, you know, help me get to the bathroom or to set up my, um, to set up my coffee enema station in the morning, which I will talk about in another video because I'm not embarrassed about it. It's the number one detoxifier um, as far as helpfulness that I use. I still do it daily or every other day, and it is a huge factor in why I'm able to even get up in the mornings. Even if I stay in bed all day, it's a huge factor in the reason I'm able to be able to sit up and stuff and just function on any given day. Um, so we will do a video on coffee enemas later. Don't be freaked out about it. I promise don't be freaked out because they're not freaky. They're really helpful. And if you take the plunge to do it, um, well, we'll talk about it more in another video. Anyway, any little, any little thing like that, I had to have someone here to help me um, because I just couldn't do it. And my, you know, but then again, I also didn't want people here because my head hurt 24-7, 365 days a year. Um, I always say 24-7, 365.25 because I, I'm annoyingly specific. But um, after I finished all of those boxes of the EBV series, we did redo my tests, and the numbers that were way sky high off the charts were back down in normal range, meaning it was dormant in my body, according to the tests. And again, Tests, like I said, are take it or leave it. However, since my previous tests of these exact same things had come back, you know, like off the charts, high, infected with EBV, my, um, you know, the tests that we had after we were finished with the treatment came back not showing EBV at all. Uh, or, I mean, you know, showed that it was within the range, within the dormant range, and that I was, at that point, keeping it in check. Um, so that's good. Now, I was, you know, I still, at that point... When I finished it in, I believe, April of 2015, 
I still had a lot of symptoms. I was still not very good. And actually, summer of 2015, I ended up in the hospital for a week and then had to live at my parents' house for two months um, while my husband was here at our house because my mom was retired and she's the only one that could stay with me all the time. And long story short, but I had to stay there for two months and he would come over after school and he's a band director. So he had band practice and the beginning of the school year and band camp and everything's really hectic for him. And he wouldn't have been able to to keep up with the house and with all of my stuff and with his job. Um, so while school started in 2015, I was living at my parents' house and he would stay over there during the weekend um, or, you know, come over after school or band practice. And it was not ideal, but we were thankful to have family that could help us out. Um, but anyway, I finished the EBV in April 2015, since EBV is what this is about. I finished the Desbio um, Epstein-Barr virus. I don't know if I said Epstein-Barr virus at any point in this video. When I say EBV, that's what I mean. Um, C-A-E-B-V is Chronic Active Epstein-Barr Virus. If you ever see that acronym, that's just a little tidbit for you. Um, I will say that I do think my energy was improved. Um, it's, it's a little hard to tell because we finished the Epstein-Barr um, Desbio boxes in April of 2015 and in May... I believe it was in May, it may have been towards the end of May, like the beginning of April is when we stopped this, towards the end of May, I think, is when we started this other, we st we decided to start the Bartonella series, the Desbio series for Bartonella, um, which will be a different video, because there was a lot I have to say about that, which I still have to go back and do several more boxes of that, because... Like I said, I'm pretty sure I'm having a Bartonella flare now. We could never even get through a whole box. We only got through like three vials because I could not handle it at that point. Because that is, I believe, my infection that is um, uh, paramount, uh, of paramount importance as far as I think that's the one that my body is um, ridden with the most extremely, if that makes sense. That is the hardest one on my body, meaning it's also the one that I have the worst uh, herxing with when we treat it in any way. But the EBV, I, I, so what, the reason I explained that is I think, I think I did see some improvement in energy. I think I did see some improvement in cognitive function. Um, I know that the appetite thing got better, at least, at least until we started the Bartonella series. Um, I know the nausea was still there, but it wasn't the horrific EBV nausea that came up for the first probably eight out of 14, 15 months of treatment. Um, if my numbers aren't adding up, just know that it was February 2014 till April 2015. So that's 14 months, I guess. So not a year and a half, 14 months. Um, and I, I think... I mean, it's hard to remember back that far, guys, and I don't have anything right here in front of me to remind me, but I know there were a lot of things going on then. I know the Bartonella was starting to surface more, which is why it's the next thing we treated. So it's hard to tell you exactly what symptoms were better. I just know that I felt an overall sense of, I can tell that this has helped my body overall in general. When it wasn't in general, it was EBV specific, but the way I felt it, other than the specific symptoms I mentioned, you know, the improved energy, the, sorry, I'm itching like crazy today all over. If I'm scratching, just forgive me, please. Um, I think I'm having, I'm detoxing majorly today. My skin is just on fire and itching at the same time. Yay, neuropathy. Um, <laughs> you gotta laugh, guys, right? You gotta laugh when you're peeling. But the EBV fatigue, um, the headache didn't really get better. However, the EBV headache got better. And this is going to sound weird to anyone who doesn't experience different types of headaches because I have many types of headaches, more than I could even probably list you if I tried. But the headache that I get with EBV is distinctly different from the headache and facial pain and stuff that I get with Bartonella, which is distinctly different from those things that I get from Borrelia, which is Lyme, or Candida, or 
um, uh, chronic acid strep infections, um, mycoplasma pneumonia. I mean, there, there are a lot of things, uh, it, you know, but the, the, it's, it's just interesting to me. I'm sorry I'm stumbling over my words so much. It's interesting to me that I could tell for a fact that the type of headache that I got with the EBV had dissipated and was replaced with this new type of headache, which I'll discuss in the Bartonella video. But so I do know that I do know that the EBV series helped me get rid of the Epstein Barr virus, or at least get it into you know the dormant state where my immune system doesn't let it overtake again. Um, so yes, I do fully believe in Best Bio uh, series therapy, homeopathic series remedies. Um, one because I hurt like crap, um, and that's not. It's not something where I can say, oh, you have to feel horrible. And if you feel horrible, that's an indication your treatment's working. No, you could take a supplement and have a reaction to one of the ingredients and it not be a herpes. For me, the fact that I herpsed with my exact EBV symptoms, except to a much higher degree, proved to me that, 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 that this is what I was herpsing from. I wasn't just reacting to it. Um, and the fact that I tested negative to it once we were finished with the 14 months of treatment, you know, my, my levels were normal and the specific symptoms that I mentioned had improved, the ones that were specifically EBV related that I could tell before we almost immediately started the Bartonella series. And I apologize, I don't have more to say about the EBV success, um, even though I do think it was successful. It's just hard to, it's hard to explain to you just how much since we did go almost right into the Bartonella series after it out of necessity. Um, but I do 100% believe the EBV series was effective and I have the paperwork to prove it. And I have the life experience to prove it. And if people don't think that your life experience is valid enough to prove something, well, it doesn't matter because if it has proved it in your life, if it has proven it, sorry, I was getting into my, felt like I was in England there or something. I could still say if it's proved it. No, if it has proven it in your life, don't let anyone tell you that it's not valid because it obviously is if it's proven it in your life to yourself, in your circumstances, and your battle, period. Um, so EBV for Desbio was not easy. Uh, sometimes it would hit me, you know, like if I would take the bio in the morning, it wouldn't, the fatigue may not set until evening and then it would still be insomnia, but I just wouldn't be able to move. Uh, but there was one time where I took it, it was the second dose of it, I think, actually. I took it in the middle of the day, and I was on our couch in the living room, and within five or ten minutes, literally, I had lost all strength in my body, and my husband had to carry me to the bedroom here and lay me down on the bed so I could just lie down because um, I couldn't move. And he had to, you know, help me you know, put pajamas on and help me take whatever supplements I had to. And he had to hold my water bottle for me. And we've, we've had, we've had quite a few spills that way, but at least it kind of makes things fun and interesting. Um, not so fun when you're spilling water on top of your bed. I'll, I'll tell you that. Be careful. But, um, there, there was not really any, any predictable pattern other than, I knew that the day after I took it was going to be rough, 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 and that appetite thing was going to kick in, the weakness was going to kick in. Um, the second day after I took it, I knew that those things were still going to be there, but generally they'd be a little better than the first day, and as time went on, you know, there was a greater difference between days one and two, and as time went on, day one wasn't as bad as day one was when I first started. Um, but then, you know, the, the third day of that would, so say I take it, I'm taking the vial, this is day one. Um, the next day is what I, or no, sorry, say I take the vial on day three, the previous day three. So day one is the day after the vial. That's what I'm referring to here. Day one was usually pretty brutal for me. Day two, which is two days after taking the vial, again, like I said, was a little better than day one. Um, still could get kind of bad, but usually I was able, at least once I got into it a little bit, I was able to eat a little something at least on the second day. Thankfully, we have a Nutribullet and we could make smoothies that on the times when I was able to eat, we tried to get as much nutrition in as we could in as, you know, dense a pack, or not dense, but in, uh, yeah, I guess dense and small of um, a package that we could so I could capitalize on the ability to eat um, 
when, when I was able to. And let's see. Oh, yeah, day three then again. You know, so day one was the first day after I took the vial. Day two would be the second day after I took the vial. Day three is time to take the next vial. And then the cycle would repeat again. You know, day three typically, and I ended up taking the vials at night because I would notice that day three in the whole uh, three-day process tended to be, the, you know, obviously the better of the three days because it was the furthest away from my dose before I was taking my next one. Um, so I was able to, you know, eat more. I was able to talk a little more once I had been on the treatment for a while. I mean, the first, the first several months of this were really brutal, guys. Um, but my body was also, and is still kind of also completely ravaged and knocked down from disease and sickness and is sensitive to everything. So there are people that can take this full strength and just have to do one box, one to 10 and another box, 10 to one, and then they're in the clear. For me, that was not the case, um, but that's not the case for everyone. So this is, again, just my personal experience. Oh, goodness. I know this is so long. I just want to make sure I get the information here for you guys. Um, Desk bio for EDD, I would recommend highly because there aren't really treatments for the Epstein-Barr virus, like typical antivirals don't really do anything. Um, if you've ever had mono, then you know that, you know, they can't like give you antibiotics for mono because it's a virus and antibiotics don't work on mono or on viruses. Um, a lot of times they don't even work on bacteria anymore. And I can't tolerate antibiotics anyway, even if it were a bacteria like my other infections. So this works in the most gentle way with your body. What it is, it is literally just a solution that they've prepared. I don't know if you can see the solution in there. Maybe you can. Can you see it moving if I, you can see there's, it's in there. Um, this, again, this isn't the EDD box. This is the first one I grabbed. Um, the, uh, what it is, is it there, on, on the solution that's in there, they have put an imprint of the biological footprint of the Epstein-Barr virus, of a deadened Epstein-Barr virus. They have imprinted that DNA into these solutions. And that sound, that is, that is probably a horrible explanation. That's the, those are the only words I can think of right now. You know, it's not like I'm drinking EDD, but I am taking, you know, doses of a solution that has the Epstein-Barr virus imprinted uh, the footprint of it and its, the, of its DNA imprinted in this solution, um, which then the theory behind it is, you know, it trains my body to recognize, you know, because I've had EBV in my body for goodness knows how long. It trained my body to recognize it as an invader and to attack it, which is where the herxine comes from. Um, because for so many years, my body just thought it, it had been in there for so long without fighting it off that I had, my body had come to recognize it as just one of my own cells. So that's the theory behind the desk bio. All of them, that's how they are designed. Um, as far as getting your body to recognize these pathogens that it has, that it has ignored and has um, kind of just assumed were part of you because they've been in, you for, in your body for so long. And it was very effective in that, I do want to say. Uh, don't let anyone, also don't let anyone tell you that your treatment methods are stupid or not right or fake or whatever. Guess what? If you take antibiotics and you have these diseases and they work for you, and I'm talking about any of the co-infections, that's awesome for you. I'm, I'm thrilled. I, I am. I am happy anytime any treatment works for anyone. I am not joking when I say that. However, I've received quite a bit of hate. Um, not from not from the Lyme community, but from people who just happen to be trolls online that say, oh, homeopathy, you're just drinking water. You might as well not be doing anything. You're wasting your money. Well, guess what? This homeopathy got the EBV in my body back into its dormant state like it is in 95% of American adults. So there's not a single thing you can do to convince me that this treatment was not effective. It may not be effective for everyone. It may not be the right treatment for everyone. For me, at that time, 
it was absolutely the right choice. And to top it off, like I said, it was the only thing my body could stand because it was literally the most gentle form of treatment available. So do I, de do I recommend Despio? Yes. Did it help um, get my EBV back under control and dormant again? Yes. Did it help resolve um, after the Herc scene, which I'm, I'm not going to minimize that. I mean, it was not fun. And my husband and mom can both attest to that. Um, I mean, my whole immediate family can, but they help me more than others typically since my mom's retired and, you know, my husband was here. Uh, um, uh, do I, would I use it again if I had an EBV reactivation, which I mentioned we're a little concerned about? Yes, I would. Without, without a second thought, I would use it again. Um, I know this has dragged on a long while, guys. I, I, when I started this video, I didn't want to only talk about EBV, but I have had people through the years ask me how my EBV treatment ended up going, and that's kind of what it is. Um, there's a lot more to it. There are some more details on my blog, on the treatment blog section at limaslame.com, but the very general version is, you know, I did it for 14 months. I was on this treatment. Um, the Herxes primarily uh, showed up in fatigue, absolute no appetite and repulsion to food, nausea and vomiting, um, just weakness overall, uh, sometimes temporary paralysis, like I couldn't move. Even though my mind could think to move, I couldn't will my hand to move. Um, brain fog, the constant headaches that I was telling you about. Um, you know, all of those flared up majorly in the middle of Herxine on this EBV treatment. Yet, when I was finished with the treatment, those symptoms, or at least the way they present in EBV in my case, because the nausea, the headaches, the weakness, all of that can also present in Bartonella, in Lyme, in Babesia, in Strep, in uh, insert co-infection here, anaplasmosis, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, they can all, you know, kind of come up and overlap some, but when you deal with these for so long, you learn to notice that there are different types, different types of headaches, different types of nausea, different types of weakness, and I can definitively say that after we finished my 14 months with the EBV series, um, and I will make a side note and say that not everyone that I've talked to has had to spend 14 months on this series. I've heard many people be successful in a much shorter amount of time. I want to make that statement clear. Not everybody has to be on this one series for 14 months. This was, again, just my experience. Um, so I, if, if, you, if you're struggling with EBV or, you know, chronic active uh, Epstein-Barr virus or relapse um, or reactivation, rather, of your EBV, uh, I, I highly recommend Despio products. You may need to find a practitioner who is licensed. I'm not sure if they can be sold online, um, you know, unless you're affiliated, you know, unless you have access from a practitioner. But it is also possible. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that. But of course, I would never, ever, ever recommend that you try something without consulting your doctor first anyway. Um, so there's my two cents on that. But I, I yes, I would recommend it. It did help me with the EBV. And this has turned into a video about Desbio for EBV and my journey to recover from Lyme and co-infection. So here is, I guess, uh, I, I'll, I would say part one, but this isn't really chronological. So here is my update on my EBV treatment that ended in April 2015. I hope this has been helpful for um, anyone that may come across this that's struggling with Lyme and co-infections. Um, if you have treated Lyme and treated Bartonella or some other co-infections and you're still not feeling well and you haven't explored EBV, I urge you to explore it just because a lot of times, um, you know, there are some doctors that won't think of it since 95% of the population carries the um, what antibody or carries the, you know, carries it in them. Once, once you have it in your body, you have it in your body for life. However, 95% of the population, uh, most, most of that percentage, you know, their immune systems are healthy enough to keep it dormant. 
if you have treated all of your co-infections, your other known co-infections, and you're still not seeing progress or improvement, and you still feel like there's a lot more you could do to feel better fatigue-wise, uh, nausea, appetite, headache, in general, in any way, um, I urge you to look in-depth into EBV or any other viral causes. Um, and I also urge you to look into uh, systemic candida, which will be a video in and of itself. And that is all I've got for you today, guys. I say that's all I've got. This was 45 minutes of all I've got. But I hope that it was helpful or at least informative for anyone that is dealing with or may find themselves in the future or may know someone who is or will be dealing with these types of infections. So um, stay strong, guys. Um, that sounds so cliche, and it's a lot easier said than done. I've even got it on my wrist here. I, I can't turn my wrist completely straight, but I don't know if you can see. Well, anyway, I've got stay strong on my wrists here, but um, that sounds cliche because a lot of times we don't feel strong. And to be completely honest with you guys, because I'm transparent, there are times when I just am crying and screaming and begging God to just take me home because I don't think that I can endure one more minute of this so-called life on earth. But the thing is, I am alive. And I am here. And no matter how bad I feel, he still gives me the blessing of being able to wake up and make the choice to choose joy every morning. And I want to quote a verse to you guys. I've got my Bible here. I want to read you Job 14, 14, or sorry, 14, 1. And this is Job. Um, he's very frustrated with it. If you don't know the story of Job in the Bible, um, I'll do a video on that too. But, basic, but uh, to give you a very short version, Job was tested time and time again in ways that you and I cannot even begin to fathom. His whole family was killed. All of his livestock were killed. He was afflicted with boils all over his body. All of his friends kept coming at him saying, Denounce your God! Denounce your God! And Job never would. But that didn't stop him from asking God and complaining to God and expressing frustration because he didn't understand it. And that's um, this 14.1 uh, here is under, under the... The subheading, you know how a lot of Bibles have subheadings to tell you what the specific section is about. Uh, you know, th there's the one subheading says Job wants to argue his case with God, and then Job asks how he has sinned. Um, but anyway, you know, so Job is just desperate here, like many of us, I would venture to say, struggling with these illnesses. Um, so Job 14.1, this is Job speaking, uh, just kind of in, in exasperation. He says, how frail is humanity? How short is life and how full of trouble. We blossom like a flower and then wither like a passing shadow. We quickly disappear. Must you keep an eye on such a frail creature and demand an accounting from me? So that, that was one through three. And um, let's skip down. Oh, here we go. This came yesterday. I had to remind myself of this because I actually was having a very, very emotionally and spiritually hard day yesterday because it was also a very physically hard day and it's making me cry just about to think about it. Um, but I, for probably an hour yesterday, I laid here in bed and in tears through screams, just like, Lord, please take me home. Please let me die. I'm not going to kill myself, God. But I'm not going to complain if you take me home. Because, you know what? You guys deserve to see my face. No matter how much the light hurts my eyes. Because I told him, I said, listen. Take me home. Please take me home. I can't handle this anymore. I don't want to be a burden to anyone else anymore. Please just let me go. And then about six hours later, I said, God... Thank you for not, for not giving me what I asked. Because you say ask and it shall be given. Thank you for not giving me the asking to be taken home. And thank you for giving me the ability to live another day of life and the blessing. Let me get down to um, Job 14, that same chapter. I want to read one more thing from it. It's verse 14. It said, uh, um, uh, 
Can the dead live again? If so, this would give me hope through all my years of struggle, and I would eagerly await the release of death. And here, I don't think Job is talking about physical death. I'm fairly certain he is talking about just feeling... Uh, who knows? Maybe that's his way to describe depression. Um, but I just want to share that with you guys. Even Job, way back in the Old Testament, knew all this stuff. And uh, to quote Beth Moore, God's word works, and you are not the person that it's not going to work for. So the promises that you will be healed do apply to you as well as they do to everyone else. And we were never promised a life without trouble, but we were promised the ability to endure it even when we feel like we're not able. So summary, you can endure even if it doesn't feel like it. I do highly recommend Best Bio um, series therapies, uh, specifically the EBV since that's what this video is about. And I'm going to end this before it hits 51 minutes. Bye, guys.